Hi, a very warm welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. So, a bit of a Hornby review today. Uh, let me just read you the number. It's R2693. This is a Class 156 Sprinter um, in the livery of One Railways. Um, I thought what we'd do is just do a little bit of an unboxing, show you what the model's like, um, do a little bit of run on the railway as normal. And there is a little bit of an anecdote, which uh, I know isn't true, but it just makes me smile. Um, Liverpool Street, the, the announcer would say, you know, the, the 751 service will be leaving at 7.50. And um, people are saying, well, hang on, which is it, 7.51 or that? Anyway, you get the get the gist. Anyway, take this over to the bench, let's get it out of the box, and uh, let's have a look at the model. Right, well, let's take a look. So, uh, sort of standard Hornby packaging, R2693, one railways, class 156. And before I undo the box, let me just bring in the catalogue. Um, so this was first released in 2008. Um, interesting to see the price here, £6.50, the price of the catalogue 15 years ago. And uh, this was actually one of their star releases of, of one of Hornby's star releases of that year. So uh, other things of note were obviously they were still doing the range of live steam. But then just a little bit further on, hold on, there it is. They did uh, several um, class 156s. So different liveries here. So we've got the one class, which is the one we're looking at today. First Scott Rail and Northern Rail. So it just says here that it's a 310 millimetres length of each unit, pristine finish, a five pole skew round motor, um, curved track, suitable for first radius, uh, should have been available first quarter, I don't know when it actually came out. Um, designer is Metro Camel, uh, entered service in 1987 and 114 of them made, but we'll go a little bit more detailed into the uh, into the history behind the uh, Sprinter in a little bit. And also we've got the price list here. So 15 years ago, I'm just looking for it, it's here. R26931, class 156, brand new, £84.75. Wow, absolute bargain. So you can pick these up. They're, I think they, they, at the moment they're selling, I think about £90, £95. Um, so they kind of retain, retain their value quite well actually, they're not bad at all. Let's slide this out and see what we've got in here. Right, I don't have any instructions with my one, but uh, let's just remove that out of the way. So you just get this card with the sort of outline of the, the loco there. Um, and it's in the polystyrene packaging that uh, was quite common on, in you know a few years back. So let's slide one of these out and let's just have a look at the, uh, at the detail. It's very tightly fitted in there. Okay, so by the feel of it, one engine has the motor in. This looks like the driven driven engine by the weight of it. This one's just a, a dummy carriage. And you can see the couplings at the end here are quite unique for joining the two units together. The same couplings either end. And uh, just looking at the front of the cab at both ends, quite nice detail on there. You've got the wipers. Um, so obviously these would be the driving ends you can see here and then the the carriages would link together on that end okay um not really a great deal to say about it i mean the the detailing's pretty good it's not too bad features on here nothing separately fitted it's all molded in and uh, the interiors don't look too bad it looks like a you know, they've got molded seats in there. Now my one is fitted with a DCC chip and I don't know if you can make it out on the camera there, but it's very evident the wires all through here. Whoever did that, uh, you know, it's not the neatest of jobs. It's not something I did. Oh, yeah. I did buy this one second hand. And then again with the dummy carriage, there's not really a great deal to say about it. You can see the detailing through here, it's all molded in. There are some, um, you know, some nice touches with where the paint's been picked out and some um, decals put on there. It's not bad looking loco for what it is, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's literally two carriages together, isn't it? But if you are running the Eastern Region, um, you know, layout, then uh, I guess this is an absolute must for it, particularly if you're running sort of the late 80s, 90s era. Anyway, let's get this over and let's get some detailed pictures of it and I'll tell you a little bit more about the, about the loco. The British Rail Class 156 Super Sprinter was built between 1987 and 1989 for British Rail by Metro Camels and Washwood Heathworks. It's a bit of a mouthful. A total of 114 sets were made. 
Uh, came about during the 1980s, British Rail were running a large fleet of DMUs or diesel multiple units and they were all of various designs and ages and all becoming very, very tired. British Rail recognised there would be considerably high costs in, in undertaking refurbishment programmes on these units. Um, and as I say, you know, they were all in different, different states of decay. So instead, they went for development and introduction of a new generation of DMU. The initial specification was for 90 miles an hour, and this was based around trying to match the EMUs, or electrical multiple units. However, this was eventually dropped to 75, mainly because of the short distance that uh, these engines would run between platforms. These were intended to be local services and not express sets. Also during the development, the requirement to link up or be compatible with other units was also dropped. From doing a bit of reading, as far as I can tell, the rest of the specification was around uh, making sure that they weren't too noisy, so a maximum sound of 90 decibels when at full speed. They would have an operational range of 1,000 miles, and their service intervals were five years or 350,000 miles. Each coach is powered, um, both outfitted with a single six-cylinder Cummings diesel engine and they run a hydraulic transmission. The body shell is different to their predecessor as these were um, welded steel, uh, unlike some of the similar, similar sort of DMUs which were uh, made of aluminium. So I've already done my anecdote about one railways and uh, the confusion that it would give on the time. <laughs> but uh, one railways ran nine of these units mainly on the Norfolk services, so sort of Norwich to Great Yarmouth, dip switch to Low Soft, that kind of thing. Well, no, I say Norfolk, Norfolk and Suffolk, and mainly where there was no electrification. Eventually all nine units passed to the uh, Abello Greater Anglia group when it took over the franchise. That was in February 22, and the last day of service for these nine locos on uh, the, you know, on the uh, Norfolk and Suffolk routes was the 29th of January 2020. They were all then moved to the East Midlands Railway. I'm pretty sure as a kid I did see the sprinters on the telly. I think either Blue Pete or Tomorrow's World or something, and ever since then I've been quite intrigued by them. I mean, real, real terms, they're just a couple of coaches stuck together, aren't they? But um, in terms of what they do, you know, zipping between stations, fantastic idea. This particular model, in this particular livery, I think looks fantastic on the layout. Beautiful smooth runner. And it just looks the part that's going around the corners. The only thing I would say is with the coaches being so long, where it says that it's okay for first radius, obviously you've got to be careful of your clearances. And on a couple of my layouts, I haven't been that, that generous with the clearances. So with a long coach on a first radius, you get obviously a lot of overhang, which is a bit of an issue. I think a fantastic model. Um, as I say, the prices have stayed pretty constant 80 85 pounds back in you know 2008 and you probably maybe 90 pounds now maybe 95 i don't know but um you can pick these up they do come up for sale quite regularly so anyway as i say i'm not do not been doing a great deal of recording at the moment please bear with me it's just so hot in the workshop that uh you know i've been trying to do do the project outside just so that uh yeah enjoy the weather but uh, apparently it's all going to change next week so we'll see see what happens Anyway, we'll leave that one there. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.